everybody and welcome back to The Average. Today I'm going to be trying this Art Academy for the Nintendo DS. I found it in a CEX store which is like a second hand store in the UK and it cost £1. So I thought, you know what? I want to give this a go and uh, see how it is. It looks pretty fun. I never played it so let's see how we do. Okay, let's do a lesson. Hi, welcome to the first of the main lessons. In this lesson, we are going to try pencil and paints together to make one picture. Ooh, wow, I'm crazy. For this, we need a canvas already covered with a wash of pale green. Artists often like to paint a canvas all over with the color before they start. This is true, to get rid of the white color, blazing white. Let's have a sneaky peek beforehand at what we are going to paint. It's going to be a tree! <laughs> Cool. In stage one, we'll sketch a basic outline of our tree in pencil. HB, baby. I hate HB pencils. Too light for me. And now what? Are we drawing a tree now? What a beautiful tree. And now what? Now what? <laughs> eh? I'm done. Now what? <laughs> oh, I click him. Continue lesson. We need pencil first because we need to sketch out an underdrawing. I never use pencil. An underdrawing is a simple drawing that can help plan the painting. Wow. Should I begin? Next, we'll do the trunk. Beautiful. Beautiful work by this guy. I've drawn it with a graceful curve. Okay, mate. I don't want it to do straight and lifeless, okay? I started it from the ground up. Oh, wow, this is like super basics, right? I guess I did start at the basics of the basics. Likewise for the branches, I'll start with the trunk and draw them outward. All right, okay. I love the music, it's very soothing. Okay, next, please. I think I got it, I think I got it, man. I know, right, what's he saying? It's like a firework going off in slow motion. So slow, we can't see it moving, what? This is what I did already. <laughs> Could have learned a lesson from him. Um, let me rub it out so I can... I can... No, I want the full effect. It's gonna be so cross with me. I imagine like when he loses his mind, he gets really, really angry. That's what I can imagine about this guy. He's like, he's like I told you to use the TV. All right, next. <laughs> he's gonna be so angry. That looks nothing like his tree. That looks absolutely nothing like, look, I think he said, go back and try again. He's absolutely gutted with me. Okay, <laughs> let's try this again. But this time I want that HP. I think I wasn't using that. Look, I added a little curvature to my... Okay, there we go. What a beautiful tree. Are you guys glad that you've watching this video? <laughs> How'd it go? Were you able to imagine the tree growing as you drew it? Not really. Understanding how the tree structure work will help you make your drawing convincing. It's always good to try and see the movement in everything you draw and paint. Good point. I don't mean that the tree physically moves around everywhere. I didn't think you meant that. But when you draw a lot, you discover that all things are made up of lines and shapes. I think, I think we knew that already, but you know, maybe not that appear to move and flow in certain directions. Once you understand this, you will find it easier to capture an object's true essence. Essence. <sighs> but it goes on, doesn't it? It's like, okay, we're getting it. It's like the same thing, you're saying the same thing again. Remember that the first lesson we talked about not having to draw everything that's there. It would take a long time to draw individual leaves here. Instead, we concentrate on the drawing of the leaves of bunches and clumps. For now, we can just imagine the clump of brown balls or balloons. Oh no, there he goes. Draw in his circles. Okay, but this is hard. I don't want to let him down. Natural clubs. Natural clubs. Oh, you can flick between yours and his to make you feel really, really bad because mine is like taking up way less of the page than his. Whatever. Continue lesson, please. Well done. We've finished our understanding now, so we won't be using pencils anymore. Uh-oh. We're moving on to the big leads, lads. Uh, he's doing it for me. 
Okay, yeah, I get it. All right, let's do it. Okay, flat brush. Yeah, green paint. Boom. I didn't actually watch him do it, did I? So, just kind of assuming he means to like... He didn't even do anything. Wait, did he do anything? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm gonna move on to the next one, I think. Let's just do what I think he's gonna go with. Now to start painting. I did it again. I did it where I just went for it and I... Now to start painting the leaf clumps. It looks like it's best not to be too tidy. If it's not too tidy. What? That looks nothing like mine. And since I have the green paint, I may as well have the paint in the ground too. Oh no. This looks very childish, but sure. Try to keep them slightly untidy for a more natural look. And now we go to mine, which <laughs> is not natural at all. Oh, because I didn't actually see the lesson. I thought he was just going to paint over the clubs. He did this as well, which is a tapping technique, which he didn't actually um, say anything about, which I think is unfair, because I think that's like a technique you should let people in on. Oh yeah, feel that paint. It actually has like a bit of a nice sound to it as you paint. Beautiful, what do you guys think? Let's compare his to mine. What do you think? I don't know why I've got like a bit of green up there, <laughs> which I can't remove, I think. Once you've painted, I think that's it. That's fine, a leaf is blowing away. Great, we've made a good start on the leaves now. Continue, wasn't, I mean, can we just, in stage three, we'll move on to the body of the tree, its trunks and branches. Let's do it, let's do it, boy. Right, I need to pick tools and then play the lesson, I understand. I want a small round, I think, and I want some brown. Is that brown? I can't tell. I think it is. And now we'll go on with the lesson. We won't, <laughs> we won't just go for it like I've been doing. The round brush is better for painting finer marks. As you paint, remember how the trunk grows from the ground up. He's so much better than me. I'm having artist uh, comparison vibes. This game is giving me bad feelings <laughs> take care when painting the branches in between the leaves okay oh no look at my absolute clump of leaves that i've done okay movement of the tree movement of the tree boom i mean mine's not too bad is it it's not the worst thing I've ever done. Can't believe that I'm actually <laughs> getting quite nervous about this game. I'm like, I need it to be good. Oh no, I don't like that. Is there? A, can I undo it? Is it? Un is there an undo button? I don't think there is. Is there? No. But there is a green. I can paint over it. <laughs> Sucker. Sucker. There we go. That's my tree. His tree, which, I mean, if I was supposed to copy it, I'm not winning any prizes, but I don't think it's that bad. Does that mean we're done, or shaded parts? Oh wait, it's less than four of six. God, how long is it gonna take? In stage four, we'll add more volume to the tree with darker areas of the shade. Let's start with the leaves again. Remember the apple lesson? Imagine that the light is falling. Wait, what apple lesson? I didn't do an apple lesson. You didn't show me no apple lesson. You said, this is the first lesson, let's go for it. And now I regret my decision. I don't know anything about apples. If we do, we can start imagine our leaves and clumps as fuzzy spheres like this. Oh no, he's gonna go back to the round ball leaves thing, which I didn't do, I just went for it. Maybe I should listen more to what the lesson plan actually is instead of just deciding for myself. We'll need some dark green paint for the shadows. I think I've got this. I got this. I want dark green and I want to change my brush to a bit of a fuller brush. Let's go. Let's go to the lesson plan, mate. I got it. Now I'm going to add some shadowy areas to my leaf clumps. Ugh. Sounds gross. Remember, it's easier to imagine them as groups of fluffy spheres. I did not do that again. Um. I mean, okay. He's just adding shadow underneath the fluffiness. I think he added some extra leaves there, which is cheating. Because he says we're adding shade, we're not adding leaves. He's a liar. It's too much. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. There we are, just imagine the light falling on broken fuzzy surfaces. Okay. Um, 
about that. Um, thoughts and feelings, guys. <laughs> thoughts and feelings. Okay, I think that's fine. I mean, I, I think I like mine more than the, the professors. Am I getting an A in this class? Like, am I getting an A? Next. <clears throat> Next, we can do the same for the trunk of the branches. Yes, I've decided this is his voice. This time, we'll try to imagine how the light would fall on a collection of tubes like these. We'll need a small round brush for this. Yeah, sure we will. Okay, it's best to try and keep them slightly loose and expressive. Remember, if it goes wrong, you can all do it. Do we like this voice? Do we like this voice or is it a bit cringe? That's it, remember the tube example, I try not to get the exact well, 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 the exit sign. Um, do I need a darker brown or is that brown fine? I'm not sure. Oh, let's try it. Oh, okay, that brown is fine. Um, yeah, whatever. There we go. Done. My tree. His tree. My tree. <laughs> Suck it, professor. Great work! We finished off by the tree by painting its shaded area. In stage five, we'll continue by adding. Oh, his voice completely changed. Adding some more detail to our painting. Can you see how I add it? I feel like I've gotten a lot of disrespect for this professor right now. It started out with a lot of respect and fear, and I thought he was a better artist than me, and then it slowly turned into I have no respect for this man. Now he has a weird voice. Okay, can you see just how adding some shaded areas gives an illusion of light falling? Here are the examples, extra touches. Mochi, you can you kind of in the way there. Mochi! Oi, 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 mochi! Mochi! The professor doesn't have to deal with this, like, kitty cat action. Oi, mochi. So cute. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. What does he want? I'm gonna click what he says. Um, this screen, okay. Ooh, we're getting deep, guys. We're going into some. Oi, oh, Mochi! Mochi! No, that is not a home for you. She's trying to get in the light. Mochi! Uh huh. Yeah, I think that's good enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm making it worse. I'm making it worse. It doesn't matter. Right, we've added the interest to the ground with some darker grass. Okay, and now for the final touch, which is, I bet it's the sun. We'll crown the painting with some last splashes of colour. How about jazzing it up with some colourful fruit? I think that I should use some red paint for this. Okay, yeah, I get the drill, get the red paint. This doesn't need to be a thing, like, I can, I understand how to get the red paint, like, now to paint apples, not too ready though, it looks nice with just you as a suggestion. I feel like he's done one too many, to be honest. Da -da 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 -da. Oh no, I can't really draw a circle. That completely ruined it, that looks so fake. But okay, we're done, I think. As a good, <laughs> as the fruit looks good, perhaps we should liven up the ground with some flowers. Let's try yellow paint for this, they could be daffodils or maybe dandelions. Dandelions! Okay, yellow. Yeah, I get the drill. Next lesson. Did anybody play this game when they were younger? I mean, it would be interesting to know if you think it was actually helpful. I mean, there were some good pointers in this, but I think it's kind of drowned out by the voice of the professor who's going to haunt my nightmares. Like, like, putting an undercoat on the canvas was a good tip that I don't see a lot of people doing and like movement and flow of the paint maybe is quite a good tip so yeah but I I think it's kind of like a nice little game especially for beginners I think it would be like a fun thing to do especially if you wanted at the time to get into like digital art I think it helps you navigate a little bit like Photoshop and stuff it's good to get used to tools early on I'm saying that as if you were playing this as a child would be probably quite beneficial this lesson has given you a good idea of the structure of all the lessons to come. Okay. Oh, fun! I think you're ready to work from there. I didn't read that. See you next lesson! Fabulous. Thank you very much. 
Now I've got the pair unlocked. I've got the pair lesson unlocked. I think I'm gonna call it a day now, but let me know if you guys wanna see more of this game because I could do another lesson. It was quite fun. Oh, she, he's got a little dog. Super cute. Look at the sprinkles. Quite fun to try it out. I, let me know if you guys have ever played this when you were younger. I feel like I was probably past the point of needing to play it when it came out. But I think it's a really good tool maybe for like younger kids actually. So I might give this to a niece and see if they like it. Because of the navigation of like the different tools and stuff can be a good starting point into digital art maybe. But yeah, this is quite fun and despite the old man's voice, I did quite enjoy it. So hope to see you next time guys. Um, please give me a thumbs up and uh, yeah, subscribe if you haven't, that would be awesome. And thanks again to my patrons and see you next time. Bye!